Welcome back to Dan's Messy Garage. This is going to be part two of putting my six-cylinder engine together. Okay, we're going to put some rings on the pistons. I bought Perfect Circle brand rings. All rings have either a dot or a word top or an inside bevel or some indication of how they go on. The bottom ring is the oil ring. And that is a three-piece deal. It's got this expanding metal piece. And then it has two real flat, thin, get these apart, rings that go on each side of that. You can see here, got the expanded part in the middle, and then there's a little thin ring on top and bottom of that expanded metal. And if you look inside the piston, you can see daylight right through there. I'm putting my finger on the outside. You can see it going across. That lets oil from inside the engine out through that expander to the piston wall. Since there's nothing wrong with my rings, my old existing rings, I'm not changing the oil ring. I'm not putting all this stuff here in the engine. It's a pain to do. I don't see the point of it. When you put your engine together, you can do what you want. Me, I'm not going to use this stuff. Okay, so there's more oil rings that go over there. There's uh, a difference between the top ring and the middle ring. Get that to focus here. The... Uh, Top ring, in my case, is like a silver color. Second or middle ring is just a flat cast iron color. Like I said, there's usually a dot or a word top or some kind of indicator to tell you which way to put this ring on the piston. These happen to have a little bevel. I highly doubt the camera's going to pick that up but a bevel on this top edge of the ring that bevel goes up it says so on the box now there's a huh. you better read your manufacturer's instructions because there's other companies that say that bevel like on the second ring especially that bevel would go down well on mine it says bevel goes up so make sure you read the instructions okay to get the rings off the piston, you can simply, since I got new ones, I know they fit, I could just grab these and unroll them off of here. Easier said than done. Just kind of roll it right out. Uh, my furnace just kicked in. You're going to have to put up with that noise. And dump. Um, Ah, crap. You know how things go real well when you're not recording and then turn the shit when you are? Let me, uh, let me go turn that furnace off. Hang on, because that's going to be buzzing and making noise here. So. There. It's electric, so I just unplugged it. All right. Now, to put rings on... I have these piston ring pliers. They just expand the ring so you can slide it over the piston. I'm going to do the second ring first, or the middle ring. I got to look for that bevel, which is here. I want the bevel toward the top of the piston. So I put the ring in the pliers. Then you just squeeze the pliers, it expands the ring, and then you can put it in position then I take the next ring which is the silver colored mine has the bevel there's no top no dot 
you know, no words on it. So I have to look for that bevel. And it goes up. All right, so I expand it a little bit. You don't want to do this too much because you can break them. There, and then you make sure that they spin easy. So that's that one's done. So now I'm going to do the rest of them, but I'm going to do that on time lapse or fast motion for you people watching so you don't have to sit through this. Here we go. All right, I'm going to install one of these pistons in there. And I'm going to show you how I do that, everything that I need to do it. And then um, I'm just going to do the other five off camera. I don't want to bore you. Like I said, there's hundreds of YouTube videos how to put engines together. But I grabbed a piston. And I'm making sure that the crank is all the way at the bottom of its stroke. This happens to be number three. And what you do to protect the crank when you put the piston in, put some, got some rubber hoses here, stick them on the studs. So when you slide it down in there, it doesn't nick up the crank. I have a universal style compressing ring compressor. Just got that from O'Reilly's just a few minutes ago. And got a torque wrench. Good old Harbor Freight Special. Torque spec on these bolts are 19 to 24. Well, they're nuts, actually. 19 to 24 foot-pounds. I'll do it in stages. I got the main bearing, or main rod bearings already in the caps on the piston. And I've got oil. Just going to oil up the sides of the pistons, the rings. Make sure that the piston ring grooves are opposite each other. And I'm going to put it in the compressor. Tighten the compressor, put the piston in, and pound her in. So I'll set you guys, guys down while I do that. And... And what? And that's just the way it is. Okay, here we go. I mentioned quite a few times, I'm not a professional. You're dealing with an idiot. You do things your way, I do them my way. And uh, Everything that you see on the not everything, but a lot of things you see on the internet is you know different uh well not opinion, I guess it would be opinion. Everybody has different ways of doing things. And then they're gonna argue with you that you're doing it wrong, they're doing it right, and somebody else can argue with them that they're doing it wrong. So okay, pistons have a notch the notch goes toward the front of the engine so i'm going to set this piston number three hole notch to the front slide this guy over there tighten it up first i want to Put these rubber thingies on here. See, I already forgot. See, I told you I like to show you how to screw things up. All right, rubber things are on there to protect the crank. Put this in there. This is going to go over the top. Make sure my ring grooves are opposite each other, which they are. Oh. 
and then loosen this up. These compressors are a pain. I like the kind that are cone, more of a cone shape. You just slide the piston right down in. I have three of them, but they're for different sized pistons. These are too small, so I got to use this. All right, let's get that down in there. Tighten this up. This is going to compress all the rings. Got the notch front. Got my little rubbers on each side of the crank. I just checked. And you take a uh, mallet, or I use the handle of a hammer. And you smack her down in there. Just like that. All the way down. Okay. Now I'm going to spin the engine block over and put the rod cap on. Torque wrench out of the way. Okay. I'm going to put some oil bearing. You could use assembly lube. I just use engine oil. Okay, the caps all have numbers on them. The uh, rods have numbers on them. You want to make sure you get the numbers to line up. They're on this side. So I slide this down. I'm going to put a little oil on these threads. And take the nuts. Put them on there. And these take a half inch socket because they're only 5 16 diameter rod bolts. Again, it's only stock 120 horsepower. I have a cam headers and a tri-power head, so I might have a whopping 150 horsepower. All right, I'm going to go like 5, 15, 24. It's five. Fifteen. Twenty-four. I'm going to live dangerous and go to twenty-five. Okay. A little double click. Check it. Now it's important to make sure after you put them in that the engine turns over freely. And it does. Okay. So I'm going to put the rest of them in and then I'll bring it back and show you how I put in the cam and timing chain. Okay, I mentioned the numbers on the cap and on the rod. You can see there's a number one stamp there and there. There's a two and a two. And over here we have a five and a five. Down there a six and a six. Spin this over. Three, three. Or four. And this turns nice. All six are in. They're all torqued down. Just drop that. 
So now uh, I'm going to put the cam in. I still need to put the oil pump in and the oil pan. Can't put the oil pan on really until I get this front cover on. And uh, the cam is next. So I'm going to clean that up and slip it in there. <laughs> 